بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم گڈ ڈے اینڈ آئی ہوپ ایوری ون از ڈوئنگ فائن سو ٹو ڈیز لیکچر از اباؤٹ پروجیکٹ مینجمنٹ فریم ورک دس از لیکچر نمبر تھری اینڈ بفور وی پروسیڈ فردر ایز دس ہیز بین دا کیس وی ول ڈسکس دا سمری آف دا پریویس لیکچر اینڈ ان لاسٹ لیکچر وی ہیو ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ دا پروسیس on the project management processes and the product oriented processes and uh, then we have uh, talked about uh, complex projects and uh, triple constraint concept uh, con triple con constraint concept with quality uh, project constraints and uh, uh, the port bottom line of all these slides was uh, the more constraints you have the more complex your project is اینڈ اور ادر وائز آپ اس کو اس طرح بھی کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ ود دا کمپلیکسٹی آف دا پروجیکٹ یو ہیو ٹو ڈیل ود سو مینی کانسٹرینٹس سو نمبر آف کانسٹرینٹ وی ہیڈ ڈسکسڈ ود اوور دیئر سکس بٹ ایز آئی ہیو ٹولڈ یو ود دا کمپلیکسٹی آف دا پروجیکٹ دا نمبر میں گو بیونڈ دیٹ اور اس میں ہم نے یہ کہا کہ یہ ایک بہت ہی اچھا ڈفرنس ہے آپ کے کم سمپل پروجیکٹ میں اور آپ کے کمپلیکس پروجیکٹ میں سو سمپل پروجیکٹس میں آپ کے پاس ایک بڑی آسانی ہوتی ہے اس میں لیسر کانسٹرینٹس کے اندر رہ کے آپ کو کام کرنا ہوتا ہے اس میں یوزلی ایک کانسٹرینٹ ہی ہوتا ہے یوزلی میجورٹی آف کیسز جب کہ کمپلیکس پروجیکٹ کے اندر آپ کے کافی سارے کانسٹرینٹس ہیں اور کمپیٹنگ کانسٹرینٹس ہیں سو یو ہیو ٹو ایکچولی Uh, compete uh, uh, for these co constraints and then uh, we ended up uh, having six uh, constraints and those are uh, time, scope, quality, cost, requirements and risk and we have talked on that in great detail in the previous lectures. So <clears throat> Then we had talk about the basis on uh, which the projects may be termed as a complex one. So uh, there, there was a, quite a list uh, over there uh, when we were having that thing. So the complexity of the projects uh, uh, was actually evaluated. So as uh, we've talked, just a summary, uh, so, so you, you are in need of more time or the duration of your project is more. Uh, then the project is more complex and then the cost of the project. The more cost of the project is there, the project will be uh, more complex. Mm -hmm. And then quality requirements are there, then risks are there, uh, issues of the stakeholders are there, cohesion of the team is there. And uh, besides that, uh, we have actually uh, noticed that um, uh, if your company had an experience of doing the same project and the complexity level is uh, quite low. But if your company is entering into business of uh, mm, uh, this type of project, uh, which is very new to the company and the organizational processes, assets are not available for that particular type of project, then the project, even a simple, simple project will be uh, complex for that organization. <coughs> so A simple project for one person may be a complex project for another person and simple project for one organization may be a very complex project of another organization. Uh, this uh, We take a very good example of that. Mm, so building up a nuclear plant may be, may be lesser complex project for USA, uh, but that would be quite a project, com very complex project as far as mm, Iran is concerned. So uh, the uh, complexity uh, actually uh, varies uh, with the experience of uh, then something <coughs> is inherent in the uh, project which makes a project complex. Like if you are doing a research or if you are, do you are doing a, an engineering project where the complete calculations are not available and then you have to you you are given with all this input data and then you have to actually reach to some destination um, perceived des destination not pre-specified but perceived destination uh, so during the course of this research or engineering you come across with so many solutions uh, so many outputs where the prime objective may or may not be achieved uh, 
but uh, um, this whole practice makes this type of projects um, uh, simple. Though might be two or three stakeholders are involved, uh, the c uh, cost is very low, mm, the time duration is adequate, uh, still the project is uh, complex because of the inherent properties or characteristics of the project in that case. Okay, we had uh, talked on that. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, we have talked about the factors, and there were seven factors we had identified. Though this is not a fixed number, uh, but you know, for the guideline, this is a very good basis uh, for project management complexity. Uh, there are seven factors we had identified. So, um, uh, this was the summary of the previous lecture, and now we move forward. Uh, to project management framework. Uh, we will talk on uh, this framework as a whole you know, for the project management of all the projects uh, which come across um, uh, during the organization, for the organization during any course of time. And uh, then there may be a uh, difference between the application of those uh, framework segments and elements to a simple project and to complex project. So when we are talking about simple projects, a part of this framework will be applicable and uh, the project management is done very good. But the whole of the framework, in addition to some other supporting project management stuff, may be used for complex project. So as far as project management framework is concerned, that is very basic and that is uh, very universal. But the level of effort for simple project is lesser. And the level of effort uh, you are actually putting up in planning and managing stuff for complex project is more. So the framework remains the same. Effort is actually varying. So let's start with today's lecture. I hope uh, uh, this lecture is uh, be uh, one of the interesting ones. So, uh, for uh, this lecture, we are actually following this uh, project management body of knowledge, uh, usually and commonly known as PMPOC. So, um, this is um, uh, perhaps the most widely acknowledged and uh, popular and appreciated project management standard in existence. It is the basis for the PMI's uh, coveted PMP certification examinations. So if you want to be a, a project management professional from PMI, you have to go through all this uh, standard and then you have to actually apply all the knowledge you have gained through that. So presently in its fifth edition, uh, which was launched this year, uh, January uh, 2013, PMPOC offers a comprehensive and sophisticated best practices and processes based standard, which can be applied to different categories of the project. Uh, at the heart of the PM block are 10 areas of knowledge and um, five processes groups which find application over the project life cycle. So uh, there are buzzwords, uh, knowledge areas, and we've, we've uh, said in previous lectures that we will talk on that. So knowledge area is, mm, uh, we are going to talk in detail. Uh, there are 10 knowledge areas and there are five processes groups um, no project which actually uh, find application. Now, this is very important uh, sentence over there, which find application over the project life cycle. So, depending upon the project life cycle and depending upon the type of the project, whether it is a simple or complex, uh, you actually find the application accordingly. So, if you are, if you are uh, doing this project while you are sitting in a room and you are uh, writing a code of underlines and that will suffice uh, your need and that will make a, a software application and uh, the total cost is uh, like 1000 rupees uh, and uh, the total duration of uh, that uh, exercise is like two weeks um, so you know uh, the project is very simple and you are not in need to develop uh, you know a complete schedule or stuff like that um, you do not, uh, you may not be able to have this uh, communication plan as you are doing this stuff by your own or you may not even have to, you know, go for the stakeholder management but a uh, few of the uh, things you will actually apply over there, you will actually estimate the duration, you will actually estimate uh, the uh, costing 
and then you uh, will uh, identify which part of uh, uh, quality you will apply to your project. So let's start uh, through this uh, uh, presentation. Okay. So this slide shows you there are 47 processes. Uh, and knowledge areas are integration, project integration management, project scope management, project time management, project cost management, project quality management, project human resource management, uh, project communication management, project risk management, project procurement management, and project stakeholders uh, management. And throughout the project life cycle, we have uh, come across with different processes groups and those are mm, uh, th there are five of them in uh, project management and first one is initiation planning implementation closure um, so we actually initiate the project and after initiation we got it approved from the sponsor or uh, the higher management and then we actually plan it and uh, after planning we implement uh, uh, or execute the pro project management plan uh, we have and then uh, we actually mm, go and close and throughout from initiation uh, to mm, uh, closure we are actually doing this monitoring and evaluation and control uh, part of the uh, life cycle so uh, so initiation then planning then implementation then close out and throughout uh, there is monitoring and control um, we will talk on that uh, and we will try to identify the difference between mm, uh, simple project and complex project in respect to uh, this uh, initiation planning implementation closure and monitoring and control uh, framework uh, for this uh, particular uh, session we are actually focusing on uh, knowledge areas so um, the five uh, project processes groups uh, summary of that uh, initiation defines and authorizes the project uh, or a phase of the project now um, when it comes to a simple project you are talking about a project and when you are talking about a complex project you actually divide the project into phases so first phase second phase third phase or fourth phase so each phase is then handled as a sub project and a complete uh, team is uh, available for that particular phase. So you actually close every phase just like you close the project. So uh, and you actually start the uh, phase just like you actually start uh, you know, the project. So um, uh, this is about initiation and then planning. Now planning is very important part and uh, you have uh, uh, heard this thing uh, that uh, planning to uh, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail so um, planning refines the project goal uh, scope requirements uh, text raw and develops the project management plan so project management plan is developed uh, in pro planning phase uh, and initiation actually uh, you know authorizes the thing and project management plan is not prepared in initiation stage project management plan or project master plan is developed in planning phase so implementation <coughs> uh, implementation uh, uh, it brings together all required resources to undertake the project in accordance with the master plan so uh, implementation some people call it execution or stuff like that then uh, so ye wo stage hai jahan ja ke aap actual kaam karte hai. whatever uh, you have planned and whatever you have been given the authority for you actually execute uh, all those in this phase and then you close uh, uh, this thing so formalizes uh, acceptance of the project output by the project customer and brings the project to its end and um, so ye wo uh, is stage ke andar aap uh, क्या काम करते हैं इसको हम रेलेवेंट सेक्शन में भी बात करेंगे जो फाइनेंशियल क्लोजर होता है प्रोजेक्ट का या आपका प्रोक्योरमेंट का क्लोजर होता है और जहां जाकर के आप उसकी एक्सेप्टेंस लेटर वगैरह लेते हैं और प्रोडक्ट जो है वो डिलीवर कर देते हैं कस्टमर को या क्लाइंट को वो इस स्टेज के अंदर होता है और रिमेंबर आई टोल्ड यू 
from this initiation to planning. Initiation to planning, uh, we are actually uh, uh, taking care of throughout this. We are doing monitoring and control. So uh, this is the five project processes groups throughout the project life cycle. Now let's start with the in, uh, project um, uh, management knowledge areas, PMBOK uh, knowledge areas. So the first one is integration management. This is perhaps the most difficult area for so many people uh, when they are actually applying the project management knowledge to project or when they are actually going for the uh, some sort of certification like PMP or stuff like that. So, agar aap uh, isko apprehend kar lete hain, is knowledge area ko apprehend kar lete hain, then you are so good with all the stuff. Now, this is the crux of the whole project management concept. In this knowledge area, what you do? So, project integration management includes the processes which are needed to identify, define, combine, unify, and coordinate the various project management processes in the project process groups. Processes include uh, are develop the project charter which authorizes you to go for the project uh, and uh, commit the resources on the behalf of the performing organization. Develop project management plan. Now this is uh, the output of integration management. Whatever the planning you have done in another areas of the um, you know, project management, uh, uh, other areas of uh, knowledge areas of project management, you actually get the summary and then you compile it and you have a project management plan. So this is done you know, through an integrated effort. So that's why this, this is placed in integration management. And then you actually direct and monitor uh, project execution, and then monitor and control project work, uh, perform integrated change control, uh, so um, and close project and phases. Okay, now we have talked about project charter. Project charter is a document which formally authorizes the project manager to commit to resources uh, and carry out the project work. Whereas Project management plan is the summary of all the outputs of the other planning processes. And then after having that plan, you actually go and you direct and manage uh, project execution. And through this execution, you actually create the deliverables. Uh, project produce karne the, wo aap udar se create karte hain. But that is not the case that you have made deliverables, they will be made by yourself. Then you have to monitor and control um, project work. You have to make necessary changes and accordingly you have to do all of this. There will be some preventive actions, some corrective actions. Now you have a thing that we are making a house and we have thought about it. कि हम जो सीमेंट यूज करेंगे वो एक मखसूस मैन्युफैक्चरर का होगा और उसकी जो स्ट्रेंथ है वो भी गिवन है और लाइक अगर कंक्रीट की हम बात करें तो वो 4000 पीएसआई वो सीमेंट हमें स्ट्रेंथ देगा अब आपके पास एक चीज आती है कि जी वो सीमेंट हम यूज नहीं करें और हम एक दूसरा सीमेंट यूज कर लेते हैं जो कि 5000 पीएसआई स्ट्रेंथ का है स्ट्रेंथ ज्यादा अच्छी है लिहाजा मैं उसको यूज कर लेना चाहिए आपका डिसीजन इसके ऊपर क्या होगा फौरी तौर पे जो आपका पहला सवाल आपके ज़हन में आना चाहिए है गुड द क्वालिटी हैज बीन इंप्रूव्ड व्हाट इज अबाउट द कॉस्ट अगर कॉस्ट भी इंक्रीज हो रही है तो वो जो कॉस्ट इंक्रीज होगी वो कहां से आएगी सो यू आर यू आर टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दैट कि वो कॉस्ट कहां से आएगी क्या आपके पास इतने फंड्स अवेलेबल हैं अगर है क्या फिर भी आपको यह करना चाहिए कहीं ऐसा तो नहीं है जो आपके पास अभी एडिशनल फंड्स अवेलेबल हैं वो कहीं ज्यादा जरूरी चीज के ऊपर लगाए जा सकते हैं और आज आप कमिट कर दें तो उसकी वो चीज खत्म हो जाए तो अब आपने ये काम करना है कि उसको एक इंटीग्रेटेड चेंज कंट्रोल बोर्ड के अंदर आपने जाके ये डिस्कस करना है 
और वहां फिर ये फैसला होगा वेल द क्वालिटी इज गुड बट यू नो देर इज अम्पैक्ट ऑन द कॉज और देर इज इम्पैक्ट ऑन और रिस्क असेसमेंट जो हमने पहले रिस्क असेसमेंट की थी वो चेंज हो जाएगी ड्यूरेशन में भी चेंज एंड स्कोप में भी अकॉर्डिंगली एडजस्टेड सो ऑल दिस इज एक्चुअली हैपनिंग इन परफॉर्म इंटीग्रेटेड इंटीग्रेटेड चेंज कंट्रोल पार्ट ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन मैनेजमेंट एंड देन यू एक्चुअली क्लोज द प्रोजेक्ट सो द प्रोजेक्ट इज बिन डन गुड बाय आई एम लिविंग नो दिस इज नॉट द केस इन रियल वर्ल्ड देन यू हैव टू कैरी योर नेसेसरी ऑर्डर्स फाइनेंशियल क्लोयर प्रोक्योरमेंट क्लोयर सो इट इज नॉट लाइक दैट यू हैव टू परफॉर्म फाइनेंशियल क्लोयर प्रोक्योरमेंट क्लोयर यू हैव टू एक्चुअली आरकाइव ऑल द डाटा यू हैव टू गेन फॉर्मल एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ द कस्टमर सो यू हैव टू क्लोज द प्रोजेक्ट बट बिफोर क्लोजिंग द प्रोजेक्ट एंड इफ दिस इज अ सिंपल प्रोजेक्ट सो यू सिंपली यू नो गो एंड फॉलो द स्टेप्स यू क्लोज द प्रोक्योरमेंट यू क्लोज Uh, you uh, first check whether all the deliverables have been produced then you close the procurements then you close the financials uh, and then you gain the final acceptance uh, and uh, get the feedback now this is very important get the feedback from the customer uh, and then you actually um, go and uh, collect all the data lesson learned during the um, project and then archive all that data uh, for future users so you are actually doing this uh, project closure but if you are doing a project and the project is constructing a motorway uh, from multan to um, ratodero sin so um, what is uh, your then you have to actually uh, divide the project into phases so the first phase will be from multan to muzaffargarh the second phase may be multan to dg khan and the third phase may be dg khan to shikarpur and shikarpur to ratodero so there may be four or five phases and then within those phases you can actually have for the sub phases so whenever you complete one phase you actually follow the same procedure so there is a difference between a simple project and f- a complex project in simple project you actually close the uh, project but whereas uh, you are actually closing the phases in the same manner you are actually treating your phases as complete projects in complex projects so projects are divided into phases Uh, to you know take care of the complexity inherent in their uh, the characteristic of the project so integration is crucial for project comp- uh, completion uh, meeting stakeholder expectations and needs making choices where to concentrate resources over time dealing with issues and coordinating project activities now this is uh, this is it now project scope statement uh the second knowledge area is um project scope statement scope what is the project and what is not your project now this is very important you should be very clear about that so this is our project and this is our not this is not our project so <clears throat> if somebody is actually asking you you are constructing a house for this guy and he says that well i have a plot adjacent to my existing uh plot where the house has been built um this is your scope uh, you have to actually put a boundary wall uh, to this abandoned plot or vacated plot uh what what should be your answer your answer should be like sir madam uh well my scope is defined and i have to construct this house and the boundary of another plot is a separate project and that does not come under the umbrella of the scope we have agreed now i am ready to do that job but we will take up this exercise a separate project and the same um another payments may be made or you can actually issue a variation order and we can have the quantities adjusted and this will be but again before offering such an offer to the uh, client you should take up this matter with your team and you should perform integrated change control whether to add the scope or not there may be a case your project team is already under uh, pressure as far as time is concerned so it is not the money always you know um, 
another case may be you have actually acquired your project team through your organization and your organization is taking up another project in some other location and um, the strategic fit of this project has been fallen a bit so first uh, this project of constructing a home uh, house for this client uh, was having high priority now the priority has been uh, lowered because of uh, the organization shift uh, towards another project still you will accept the offer of the client no you will perform integrated chain control and then you will identify your project team has to complete the job within six months so that the team can be released for the another projects which are the organization is taking up if there is no room for your project team to do that extra job just refuse just say sorry we we cannot take up that so it is not only about you know if they are offering you well we are going to pay you more for this work say okay we will discuss that thing get back to your team and to your project management uh, sponsor and then your top management uh, whether to take up this work or not so you should be very clear about your scope so um, this diagram over there uh, is actually uh, showing what um, this is showing what you have to do. This is a plan of a house, mm, and uh, this is what you have to actually construct. So, as far as engineering projects are concerned, they are very good. Uh, they have very good scope statements, uh, and uh, as far as social sector projects are concerned, they are they do not have that much clear scope statements. And what is the reason behind that? The reason is that uh, the requirement collection is quite an easy thing as far as engineering projects are concerned. So construction projects uh, have been matured over the time you know, through the efforts of engineers in uh, centuries uh, in, um, uh, over the globe and uh, they are working. So they have come across with uh, such a language and such a notations and such symbols so they are able to uh, communicate effectively and uh, their scopes are very much clear but as far as social sector projects they are facing these challenges so people are actually working very hard uh, to define the requirements as neat and, and as uh, elaborated as they can but still uh, there is a lot of work to do in that aspect okay so what does uh, this project scope uh, state uh, scope management uh, is been stated in pm bock area of uh, pm bock um, project scope management includes uh, the processes required to ensure that the project includes all and only uh, the work needed for its successful completion in other words scope management asks what is included in the project and i have told you and what is not included in the project is uh, is learned through, through scope management and completion of the project scope is measured against the project management plan uh, where the requirements and specification of the project output are given processes covered under project scope management are plan scope management collect requirements define scope uh, create WBS validate scope and control scope so there are uh, six processes under scope management and uh, there, this, there is a very um, brief of it like uh, you actually have plans but a uh, way to uh, bring the standards and uh, what to use in scope management uh, from it then you actually collect the requirements uh, what are the requirements of the client and uh, this takes a lot of you know time and uh, energy and resources so many are people who are, who are not uh, very much clear or inexperienced in project management they simply agree whatever uh, they have been told and when they go to actually execute the projects they face uh, so much hardship and uh, there comes a feeling of uh, injustice and uh, uh, they get back to the client well uh, the cost of the uh, effort was not anticipated by me by that time and your requirements are so rich so well, this happens in every day in our life and you people are the one who the ones who are actually working on some projects they will agree with that uh, the people usually do not um, you know, give good attention uh, when it should have been and they actually face a troublesome 
सो आई हैड दिस वेरी पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस एंड वन ऑफ माई वेंडर Uh, वो मेरे पास uh, आया और uh, हमने उसे कहा कि हमें ये स्पेसिफिकेशन चाहिए ही अग्रीड एंड uh, जब हम उस प्रोक्योरमेंट कर रहे थे तो इन द फाइनल स्टेजेस ऑफ प्रोक्योरमेंट ही टोल्ड वी दैट ही इज अन एबल टू मीट द रिक्वायरमेंट्स आई हैव गिवन टू हिम नो एट दैट टाइम द सिचुएशन वाज क्वाइट ग्रेव एंड दिस गाय वॉज टोल्ड टू फॉलो वट वी आर एक्चुअली requiring and uh, he had to uh, you know uh, accept uh, the proposal on higher costs uh, because uh, this has been uh, agreed earlier so this is very important part so we collect requirements uh, through our knowledge and uh, there are tools and techniques available uh, how we do collect requirements so this is not the uh, you know um, subject of this presentation Uh, so we we'll move ahead uh, the one who is actually interested how to collect requirements in most efficient way is advised to read the pm boc uh, knowledge area scope management in pm boc okay now we move uh, towards very important part of uh, project management and that is time management you know projects are time bound uh, as i've told you if somebody is telling you uh, this project is a uh, thousand years long so you know he is not right um, such uh, length of the project is not that common and uh, uh, hence uh, we actually try to capture our thing within some boundaries time constraining boundaries so that's why um, so people are actually uh, get motivated when they are given time bound activities so this is very important part of our uh, project management plan the time management uh well uh in project management industry in pakistan uh, we have seen that uh, majority of the people they actually work on uh, softwares like ms project primavera and then come up with can charts and they usually call it project management uh, well that is just a part of tiny part of the total project management we have we are talking about uh that is very important part uh, but that is a tiny part of the total project management so uh, when it comes to uh project management when it comes to uh complex project management uh, then i want to share one example with you so uh there i've been told uh, this fact that ke uh, agar pakistan ek makhsoos uh, river ke upar एक डैम बाय 2017 नहीं बना सकेगा तो वो जो पाकिस्तान का पानी है वो नेबरिंग कंट्री का राइट उस पर वो मान लिया जाएगा सो इन दैट स्नैरियो पाकिस्तान हैज टेकन अप दिस प्रोजेक्ट एंड अब उसकी कॉस्ट जो है वो 300 परसेंट से ज्यादा जा चुकी है 300 हंड्रेड आई मीन आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट बिलियन ओवर देयर थ्री बिलियन से ऊपर थ्री से ऊपर जा चुकी है और उसका जो स्कोप है वो भी वेरी कर रहा है काफी ज्यादा उसकी क्वालिटी वेरी कर रही है बट ओवर देयर दो आर नॉट इम्पोर्टेंट एट ऑल द टाइम इज बिकॉज वी हैव टू कम्प्लीट दैट प्रोजेक्ट बिफोर 2017 थाउजेंड सेवनटीन टू सेव अ लॉट ऑफ फ्यूचर फॉर आवर जनरेशन टू कम सो सी द टाइम इज एट टाइम्स द टाइम इज बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पैरामीटर so um, effective time management uh, is very much needed uh, and uh, what you do in the time management processes are required to ensure the completion of the project within the time frame which has been allocated for it so jo bhi aapka time hai uske andar andar aapne reh ke jo plan karna hai usko aur usko execute karna that is project time management and processes covered under project time management are plan schedule a management and define activities sequence activities estimate activity requirements estimate activity durations and develop schedule and control schedule so first we we are actually planning for the time management and we are collecting all the uh, organization process assets and all the formats all the templates we have within our organization or outside our organization and uh, best practices and then we actually define activities remember in scope management one of the processes create wbs 
work breakdown structure and we are going to talk on that in upcoming uh, lectures uh, creating WBS so when you have your WBS with you work breakdown structure uh, with you and uh, work breakdown structure is you know uh, dividing the project into manageable uh, work elements so the project is divided into uh, phases and phases are divided into control accounts and control accounts are divided into work packages and planning packages and work packages so this structure hierarchical structure and we are going to discuss uh, in detail on that is further divided into activities in time management so we act actually define the uh, activities now what is the name of the activities what is the description of the activities and what are the attributes of the activities these are decided over there so project is further divided into activities and based on the inherent characteristics of the activities we actually define the sequence in a network diagram or the relationship between both the activities or uh, whatever the number we have uh, available of activities with us we actually have what activities depending on which activity uh, and or uh, what activity is dependent on some external uh, activity or external project or external event so this is done in this process and through that we get a very good network diagram uh, network diagram we have we will talk on that uh, uh, in detail in upcoming lectures so after having this thing with us we actually estimate the number of resources and for the time uh, for which these resources are needed so the resource requirements for particular one activity is actually uh, decided in this process so if we are constructing this house and there is an activity of erecting a wall uh, so resources may be uh, the bricks the cement the sand the water the uh, mixer then laborer then uh, the shuttering then scaffolding and then uh, the masons then a supervisor and then engineer so these are I've just uh, you know counted uh, about 11 resources so 11 resources are required okay so uh, there are different units then you know when we are talking about bricks the bricks are in number in available in market like uh, 1000 bricks or 2000 bricks or 3000 bricks so if this activity is constructing uh, 10 meter uh, length wall and the height of the wall is like um, 4 meter uh, and thickness of the wall is 9 uh, inches so what will be the resources then so we will actually calculate the number of bricks the number of cement bags we are going to use the number of cubic meter of sands we are going to use the number of liters of water we are going to use the number of masons and uh, for which duration like if one mason works uh, one day or eight hours and actually plants you know uh, 1200 uh, bricks how many masons will be needed if the number of bricks to be um, uh, uh, placed are 3600 एक मिस्त्री 1200 इंटे लगाता है एक दिन में तो अगर हमने 3600 इंटे लगानी है तो हमें कितने मिस्त्री चाहिए यहां दो चीजें आ जाएंगी पहले हम इसका जवाब देते हैं तीन मिस्त्री और हम ये ज्यूम कर रहे हैं कि ये काम अभी भी एक दिन में होगा लेकिन अगर हम ये कहें कि यही काम हमने तीन दिनों में करना है तो हमें कितने मिस्त्री चाहिए हमें एक ही मिस्त्री चाहिए लेकिन तीन दिनों के लिए चाहिए सो इन दिस फैशन वी एक्चुअली डिफाइन वट आर our activity resources requirements and we estimate that based on activity resource uh, uh, resources uh, we actually define the duration in jo main abhi example de raha tha ki agar hamari humne sirf 1200 inte lagani hai aur hamare paas ek mason available hai to duration of the activity will, will be one day aur agar humne wohi uh, inte jo hain uh, wo uh, agar hamare paas ek mason hai और हमने वही इंटे लगानी है तो फिर तीन दिन ड्यूरेशन होगी और अगर हमारे पास तीन मैसन है तो वही एक्टिविटी की ड्यूरेशन एक दिन होगी सो दिस इज अ वेरी गुड एग्जांपल ऑफ वेरी मच्योर्ड नॉलेज एरिया ऑफ कंस्ट्रक्शन मैनेजमेंट बट यू नो 
things are not that simple in real life. When you are talking about a social sector project, and one of the activity is uh, to carry out the survey of thousand uh, houses for uh, poverty index. अब इसकी क्या duration होगी? इसके ऊपर कोई standard available नहीं है. जो standard America में होगा, वो Europe में applicable नहीं होगा. जो Europe में available है वो पाकिस्तान में अवेलेबल नहीं हो सकता पाकिस्तान के अंदर इसका टाइम से ज्यादा हो या कम हो अब आपने वो कैसे करना है देन देर आर डिफरेंट टूल्स अवेलेबल यू एक्चुअली हैव मीटिंग यू हैव एक और ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने वो काम किया था आप उनसे रबता करें जी आपकी एक्टिविटी ने कितना टाइम लिया था वो ये कह सकते हैं कि हमने यही काम जी सात दिनों में किया था दूसरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने कहा हमने पंद्रह दिनों में किया था तीसरी ने कहा हमने किस दिनों में किया था अगर बस तीन वैल्यूज आ गई आप पर्ल टेक्निक यूज कर सकते हैं आप पैरामीट्रिक टेक्निक यूज कर सकते हैं और स्टफ लाइक दैट देर आर डिफरेंट टूल्स एंड टेक्निक्स अवेलेबल सो वी विल टॉक ऑन दो इन रेलिवेंट सेक्शन ऑफ आर लेक्चर्स एंड देन यू एक्चुअली डिवेल्प द शेड्यूल आफ्टर कैरी नॉट ऑल द स्टफ यू एक्चुअली डिवेल्प द शेड्यूल एंड देन यू कंट्रोल इट एंड दिस इज टाइम मैनेजमेंट so cost management and uh, mm, this is uh, this is uh, one of the very important part people usually talk about the money whenever it comes to project uh, uh, in pakistan most of the decisions are actually based on monetary terms and uh, according to the money so this is very important part and the project cost management includes the processes which are required to plan manage and control cost so that the project can be completed within the budgeted allocate allocate budget allocated for it and processes covered under uh, project cost management are plan cost management estimate cost determine budget and control cost so you estimate the cost now remember the sequence you create wbs in scope management then you define activities and then you actually estimate the resource requirements in time management and basing on uh, requirement activity requirement estimates and activity duration estimates you actually have the cost in this area so if somebody is ask uh, asking about uh, if you you have to you know carry out the cost without uh, scope and time so what will be your answer uh, that will, that is kind of pretty difficult and um, you know uh, estimating the cost then you determine budget and we will talk on what is uh, uh, what do i mean by the budget and estimate uh, we will try to complete one estimate and one budget uh, in upcoming um, lectures and then we control the cost uh, controlling the cost we will use a very good tool called earned value management this is a combination of you know cost time and scope and we actually uh, control all these parameters through one tool one of the very important parameter quality management this is uh, one of the knowledge areas jiske upar badi baat ki jati hai lekin jiske upar bahut kam consideration hai kuch project areas ke andar aur kuch mein bahut zyada hai agar hum baat kare organization ke andar to ye basically ek behavior hota hai organization ka ki wo kitna quality oriented hai so project quality management includes the processes for ensuring that the project satisfies uh, the needs and requirements for it uh, for it was undertaken in the first place so there are uh, things like needs and requirements uh, so ye jo requirements hain ye wohi hain jo humne pehle identify ki hain aur needs ko humne translate karna hota hai needs and wants ko humne requirements mein transform karke ya translate karke humne usko check karna hota hai project quality management addresses both the project output deliverable based uh, as well as the management of project process based it recognizes the importance of customer satisfaction now this is very important the projects are done for some client and if the client is you have completed the project and the client is not happy that means your project quality is not good now this is very important you have to you know keep the customer satisfied for a successful project uh, other day i was uh, telling this example if you have uh, done your project within the time within the cost within all the constraining elements and uh, the project same project is not used by the your organization 
according to me, uh, this project a failure because it does not have done the objective. And you know who decides uh, whether the project is success or failure? It is the stakeholders. So their satisfaction is very much needed. And then prevention over inspection. So um, uh, this the system should be like that. The quality should be built in not inspected in so this is a quotation so uh, prevention should be observed and inspection should be avoided as much as uh, but you know inspection has uh, merits as well but you should go for the prevention uh, if you you are focusing more on prevention you you will be having lesser inspections and inspection comes with you know the product has been done product has been made so you are actually doing what you are if you find some flaw in that and then through inspections you have to go and re rework so the cost of prevention is very less than the cost of rework and uh, stuff like that so you actually uh, prefer in prevention and uh, management responsibility and continuous improvement so quality is not only about product the chair we are making this is a good chair this uh, satisfies all the standards we have specified no it is all about it is beyond uh, this concept and this is continuously improvement if your your system is continuously improving if you are con you are constructing one project and you are constructing another project and with the passage of time your processes are getting matured and you are actually improving the quality of the work uh, and uh, the processes are getting matured then yes then your organization is doing doing good quality work if they are not uh, learning from the past errors or uh, then they, you are not uh, you know not doing good job over there and processes covered under project quality management are plan quality perform quality assurance and perform quality control so many people get confused about quality assurance and quality control so i give them one tip and uh, that is very uh, handy and uh, <clears throat> quality assurance is about process and quality control is about deliverables so if you are working on a process and you are improving and you you are ensuring that the process is improving and uh, following the uh, set procedure then you are doing you, know, you are performing the quality assurance and uh, while you are inspecting uh, the deliverables and uh, then uh, there are three deliverables uh, those are fine and for the deliverable that needs improvement you are doing quality control so we move uh, towards human resource management another uh, very important part of project so it is your project team who has to work uh, hard and to bring the success to your project so they are the people which should be taken care of during the currency of the project and project human resource management includes uh, the processes needed to organize and manage the project team human resources are considered an organization's most important asset and the same applies to the projects processes covered under project human resource management are develop human resource management plan acquire project team develop project team and uh, manage project team so all the trainings all the uh, team building activities, all the concept of co-location, war room, uh, conflict resolution, issue logs, all is covered under this area. Communication management, now this is very important. Uh, Humans are actually blessed or cursed with this thing. And even um, any living substance, uh, they actually communicate. Uh, so animal they communicate and we have seen this on National Geographic and stuff like that at times the plants they actually communicate as well so communication is very much there um, uh, between the living substances so the communication uh, means maybe different uh, I'm communicating using this uh, uh, lecture through uh, recordings and you may be communicating through body language or through face-to-face -face interaction so uh, whatever the communication mode or method you are using on your project it should be uh, fulfilling all the requirements of your stakeholders so communication in the absence of stakeholders is meaningless so it should be in relation to the stakeholders we will talk on uh, stakeholders in this class okay so project communications management includes the processes needed to ensure timely and appropriate generation, 
collection, dissemination, storage, and ultimate disposition of the project information. Consider the lifeblood of a project, communication is often a challenging undertaking and difficulties in or a total breakdown of communication can severely impact a project. This is a very, very important part of project management plan. So processes covered under project communication management are plan communication management, manage communications, and control communication. So there are three uh, processes in, uh, in communication management in PMBOK 5. Well, uh, risk management, um, we will talk in detail on that. We will have uh, quite time with uh, uh, risk management in this class. So this is just a summary, and we will have uh, things, and we will try to avoid this uh, person over there um, uh, to be saved from this risk. Uh, or, you know, uh, risk has uh, two different dimensions. Uh, risk may be a negative one or a positive one. So we, avo we try to avoid uh, negative risk, and we try to maximize or capitalize uh, the opportunity risks. So project risk management includes the processes needed uh, to manage the risk on, on the project with the view to reducing the likelihood of negative impact on attainment of the project goal, the project cost and time, and the project stakeholders. And we want to enhance the opportunity risks. The processes covered under project risk management are plan risk management, then we identify risks, and then perform qualitative risk analysis, then perform quantitative risk analysis, um, plan risk responses, uh, and monitor and control risk. So uh, we will talk uh, uh, in detail in relevant section of the uh, course, so I'm just uh, moving ahead. OK, so um, uh, the picture over there is showing what? A trolley. Uh, so you are actually going and uh, uh, to buy something. Um, so I just asked one question over there. Uh, so if you are, uh, uh, your project manager is about to say that, uh, well, uh, we are constructing uh, these uh, chairs, uh, state of the art modern chairs, five of them, and uh, we have done all the R and D, and uh, now we have to actually put all the pieces into one single chair and uh, our project team members are limited and we are going to complete one chair in one month. Uh, accordingly, five chairs will be completed in five months. But the time uh, fixed by the top management is very tight and we, are, uh, we have to complete our project in three months. So what will we do then? Okay, now the question is, should we go and hire our team again or should we do something else? My answer is, well, we will do something else. And what is that? We will outsource that part of thing to another organization. So uh, this is one example of uh, uh, how uh, and why should we procure something, uh, procurement of the goods, procurement of the works, procurement of the services. It is all around there. Um, and we will talk in procurement of uh, complex projects, and we will carry out um, case studies on that. So for the time being, we will give you a glimpse of project procurement management. This includes the processes for acquiring or purchasing uh, the materials, products, goods, services, which are needed to perform the project work. Project procurement management includes a contract management as well and change control processes required to administer contracts or purchase order issued by the project team. Processes covered under project procurement management are plan procurement, conduct procurements, and administer procurement, and then close procurement. OK. This is very important part of uh, PMBOK knowledge areas. And uh, initially, this was not a part of PMBOK uh, 4 and previous versions. Uh, as of my knowledge is concerned. Uh, well, this has been added in uh, PMBOK 5, stakeholder management. And stakeholders are those who actually decide the success or failure of the project. So they can make or break the project. 
So managing them is very essential for the success of your project. And when you are talking about a simple project, uh, well, there may be uh, you an engineer yourself and you are actually project manager of your project as well and team members may be two people. And your customer um, is uh, the one who is uh, actually running a software house and uh, there is a quality control and assurance guy over there. So you are having few stakeholders to involve with. What about if you are constructing a dam in the Amar Basha? So there are, you know, communities you have to interact with. Uh, even the countries you have to interact with. Um, there, there are different countries who are stakeholder to that project and uh, the number of stakeholders are there, so you have to. So this is the difference between a simple project and a complex project, the state number of stakeholders. And then uh, besides the number, there are other parameters like the interest of the stakeholders and the influence they can have on your project. If somebody is having a great interest but they cannot impart a very good influence, so you actually can, uh, you know, uh, having lesser stakeholder engagement strategy for uh, this guy and on the other end one guy who is actually having a good interest and uh, having good influence on your project. Uh, in that case you should be very careful and you should have uh, devised some uh, good strategy to manage the stakeholder. Uh, we will talk on that in relevant sections of our course. Uh, but over there, this is a summary project stakeholder management includes the processes required to identify the people, communities, groups, organizations that could impact or be impacted by the project to analyze stakeholder expectations through project and their impact on the project and to develop appropriate management strategies for effectively engaging stakeholders in project decisions and executions. <coughs> Processes covered under project stakeholder management are identify stakeholders, uh, plan stakeholder management, and then control stakeholder uh, engagement. So there are uh, three processes in stakeholder management. So uh, we are talking about construction uh, so many times. The construction you, you can see over there. So uh, the first uh, uh, snap is, you know, uh, a beautiful, uh, lightning building, uh, but you know, um, constructing such a building is um, a very complex job. Then constructing a road, uh, this is this is in Pakistan, um, uh, in Hangol, uh, National Highway 10 uh, from uh, Karachi to Gwadar. So this is uh, uh, very very tough terrain, and the engineers have done a marvelous job to construct such a road over there. And, <clears throat> oh yes, this is the, uh, one of the uh, biggest activity uh, the human actually uh, carry out, constructing a dam. They actually obstruct the way of the water and they actually channelize and they, uh, the passage and path of the water. So the way in which something is built or put together is called construction. And so construction is a very complex type of activity. Mm, a lot of stakeholders are involved, uh, the capitals are involved, the cost are huge, uh, time durations are uh, quite uh, considerable, and um, uh, the activities, uh, number of activities are there, stakeholders are huge, um, their impact and the influence is huge, mm, uh, expectations are very high. Uh, so construction is, uh, that's why the construction is uh, such a complex endeavor. Okay, while the PM POC guide, we have talked on that earlier, there are 10 knowledge areas, but it provides only a generic foundation for managing projects. This extension, and this extension means construction extension is available from PMI for PM POC, standard PM POC, then you have to actually add something and uh, there is a, an extension available for construction works. Uh, addresses, uh, this extension addresses the specific practices found in construction projects. This extension to PM BOG describes the generally acceptable principles for construction projects that are not common to all project types. 
So there are some something uh, which is unique in construction project which is not available with other projects. So we can actually have this extension. And four more knowledge areas, adding to those t 10 areas, um, there are four more knowledge areas for construction extension in addition to uh, common knowledge areas of the project. It, it is written nine over there, but uh, you know, I've told you there are 10 common knowledge areas. So 10 knowledge areas and then four. So if you are working on a simple project, as I've told you, the level, even all the knowledge areas, if all the knowledge areas are being used, still the tools and techniques given for simple projects will be different and the tools and techniques used for the complex projects will be different. So uh, different mean lesser number of tools and techniques, more number of. So the level of effort will be lesser, the uh, level of effort is, will be more. And when it comes to construction, even though you are using these 10 knowledge areas for complex projects, construction actually calls for more knowledge areas beyond that and there are four knowledge areas available. Similarly, uh, government project or public sector projects, they are uh, different uh, from the private sector projects, where private sector projects are focusing mainly on the profits and other parameters. The public sector um, projects are taken up just to provide the service to people. So their apprehension of the things is quite different. So PM Bok uh, extension for government uh, sector projects is available. See, if you are doing the simple project, then uh, PM box standard PM box is quite okay. But then, when you move towards um, construction or government, then you have to uh, add a few more processes and even knowledge areas. While the PM box guide provides a generic foundation for managing projects, this extension addresses. Uh, the specific practices found in public sector projects. This extension to the PM BOG describes the generally acceptable principles of public projects that are not common to all project types. And the number of knowledge areas are uh, nine uh, in this area, uh, in this guide, because this is third edition uh, of uh, this extension, and PM BOG 5 has been issued in this January. So I hope uh, the extension, the revised fourth. Uh, extension will have stakeholder management as well so but by this time in uh, point in time we are having nine knowledge areas in this extension however the number of processes are quite different uh, some uh, some are added some are deleted uh, according to uh, the government sector uh, public sector projects and uh, the last two extensions are available and one extension is underway is been prepared by PMI uh, that is software extension Mm, that is uh, uh, fifth edition uh, uh, is uh, underway. Um, while the PM Bog guide provides a generic foundation for managing projects, this extension addresses the specific practices found in software projects. Uh, and this will be released uh, by PMI soon. So, uh, see if you are working, I repeat again, and this is very important if you are working on a simple project, you are not in need of additional uh, uh, applications. But when you move to complex projects, uh, you are in need of more applications, more tools and techniques, and more uh, clear planning for the complex project management. Now, this is the difference between simple and so. One example of uh, additional knowledge areas as far as construction is concerned. So, um, one of the knowledge area added in construction is project safety management. So, project safety management processes include all activities of the project sponsor owner uh, and the performing organization which determine safe, safety policies, objectives, and responsibilities so that the project is planned and executed uh, in the manner that prevents accidents which cause or have uh, the potential to cause personal injury, fatalities, or property damage. So when you are working on a construction project, so you are actually taking care of the safety as well. This safety part is missing other knowledge areas because those uh, knowledge areas are for standard projects. And while you are con uh, constructing this uh, software in a room, there won't be a safety issue as such uh, through your project. There may be some workplace safety things like that uh, which, uh, which are being uh, uh, over there 
but for project safety management there won't be some consideration but for construction projects uh, this consideration is very important and processes covered under this knowledge area are safety planning performed safety assurance and performed safety control okay the construction as I was telling you this beautiful uh, uh, lightning building and this uh, highway and uh, this dam they actually create some change they actually create some uh, uh, some some nature force to behave differently so ultimately impacts come on environment and project environment management is necessary for such type of activities so this is uh, again this this activity may not be needed in for a simple project but this is very much needed for construction project and this includes all the activities of the project sponsor owner and the performing organization which determine environmental policies objectives and responsibilities the purpose of which is to minimize the impact on the surrounding environment and nature sources and to operate within the limits stated in legal permits now this is very important you must have uh, traveled on motorways and uh, have you ever noticed uh, there are uh, you know uh, the authorities concerned have provided the passage underneath the uh, motorway uh, for the movement of the animal over there uh, so jab agar aap kabhi yahan se ja rahe ho to kachwe ki tasveer bani hui aapko sign board pe lagegi uh, by that time you should slow down your speed aur uh, kuch aise jagah honge jahan titliyon ki मूवमेंट होती है वहाँ आपको स्पीड कम करनी होती है तो ये तो उनके लिए एक मुस्तकल रास्ता बना दिया जाता है लेकिन जब आप कंस्ट्रक्शन कर रहे होते हैं तो उस वक्त भी उनके पाथ को कोशिश की जाती है कि वो ना डिस्टर्ब हो इसकी बड़ी अच्छी एक और एग्जांपल है कंस्ट्रक्शन जब हम करते हैं एक डैम की या ब्राज की तो हम बेसिकली पानी की मूवमेंट को रोक देते हैं और हमने ये देखा है कि जो मछली है वो हमेशा जब उसका अंडे देने का सीजन आता है तो वो हमेशा अपस्ट्रीम पानी के मखालफ जा करके अपस्ट्रीम पे किसी झील में किसी पॉन्ड में वहां अंडे देती है अब आपने पानी रोक दिया अब मछली ऊपर जा नहीं सकती तो इसका फिर क्या हल किया जाए इसके लिए फिर एक एडिशनल स्ट्रक्चर प्रोवाइड किया जाता है जिसको कहते हैं फिश लैडर जिसके थ्रू जहां जहां के पानी मुसलसल जारी रहता है बाकी सारा पानी रोका होता है ये एक मखसूस गेट होता है जिसके अंदर से मुसलसल कॉन्टीन्यूसली पानी की मूवमेंट जारी रहती है सो दैट द फिश कैन ट्रेवल अप स्ट्रीम और वो अपने वहां जाकर के अंडे दे सके तो ये हमने फिश को फेसिलिटेट किया है और ये बेसिकली किस चीज के अंडर आता है ये बेसिकली प्रोजेक्ट एनवायरमेंट मैनेजमेंट के अंडर आता है and processes covered under project environment environmental management are environmental planning perform environmental assurance and control and another very important parameter as far as construction is concerned is project financial management so financial management includes the processes to acquire and manage the financial resources for the project and compared to the cost management is more concerned with revenue sources and monitoring net cash flows for the construction projects than with the managing day to day cost तो कॉस्ट मैनेजमेंट के अंदर हम डे टू डे कॉस्टिंग कर रहे होते हैं और इसके अंदर हम जो रेवेन्यू रिसोर्सेज हैं और उसके कैश फ्लोज को इसको मैनेज कर रहे होते हैं और इसके अंदर जो प्रोसेसेस कवर्ड होते हैं वो हैं फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट प्लानिंग परफॉर्म फाइनेंशियल कंट्रोल एंड फाइनेंशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन एंड रिकॉर्ड सो देर आर थ्री very important part very very important part in construction claim management uh, jo log construction ke sath attach rahe hain construction ke contract documents bade hi uh, clear hain aur bahut zyada matured hain uh, sabse zyada uh, jo contracts uh, type jo hain ya uh, procurement documents jo mature ho chuke hain wo shayad construction ke hi hain uh, kyunki iske sath kafi sare log kaam kar rahe hain puri duniya ke andar uh, different authorities hain different adare hain jo sirf aur sirf construction ke प्रोक्योरमेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स बनाते हैं इतने ब्रीफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स और काफी काफी उनके साइज दिस मच थिक और इवन बियॉन्ड दैट उनका साइज होता है तो उसके अंदर से आपने सारी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट की क्लॉजेस को आपने हक में रखना होता है अगर आप प्रोजेक्ट कर रहे हैं तो आपने देखना है कि आपके इंटरेस्ट वॉस्ड हों और आपका कोई क्लेम बनता है तो वो जो है रियलाइज हो सके सो दिस नॉलेज इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्लेम मैनेजमेंट so claim management describes the processes required to prevent construction claims 
to mitigate the effects of those that do occur and to handle claims quickly and effectively. And processes covered under project claim management are claim identification, claim quantification, claim prevention, claim resolution. So uh, in this session, uh, we have talked about PM BOG. We have talked about the processes groups. We have talked about the processes groups. We have talked about the knowledge areas. We have talked about the knowledge areas. We have talked about the simple project. We have talked about the complex project. We have talked about the level of effort. We have talked about the process and the steps. We have talked about the simple project. We have talked about the complex project. We have talked about the level of effort. जब एक हम प्रोसेस कर रहे थे तो उसके अंदर अगर टूल एंड टेक्निक छह थे और वही काम हम कंप्लेक्स प्रोजेक्ट में करेंगे तो हो सकता है कि वही उसी सेम प्रोसेस के लिए हम टूल एंड टेक्निक जो है वो बारह यूज करें या ज्यादा यूज करें और लेवल ऑफ एफर्ट डिफरेंट हो जाती है उसके बाद हमने बात की कि जब प्रोजेक्ट ज्यादा कंप्लेक्स हो जाते हैं तो ये जो आपका स्टैंडर्ड है जो जेनेरिक है इसके लिए आपको स्पेशलाइज एक्सटेंशन की जरूरत पड़ती है वो आई का भी है वो गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर का भी है और वो जो आपकी कंस्ट्रक्शन है उसके लिए भी है कंस्ट्रक्शन की जो बुक है एक्सटेंशन है उसको हमने डिटेल से डिस्कस किया चार नॉलेज एरियाज एड हो गए सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन अ सिंपल प्रोजेक्ट एंड कम्प्लेक्स प्रोजेक्ट and usage of documents in relation to complexity of the project. This has been discussed throughout uh, this uh, lecture. Koi particular slide nahi hai iske upar, lekin jo true essence thi, wo sari ki sari yahi thi, ke aap ne project ki complexity ke hesaab se apni effort karni hai. Agar aapka project bilkul saada sa hai, to ye nahi ke aap ne sara ka sara aur اچھا خاصا والمینیس قسم کا آپ نے ایک پروجیک منیجمنٹ پلان بنانا ہے یہ دیکھ لیجی گا کہ اتنی ہی ایفٹ کریں جتنا کہ آپ کا پروجیکٹ ہے یہ نہ ہو کہ آپ کے پروجیکٹ جو پروجیکٹ کی کاؤسٹ ہو پروجیکٹ منیجمنٹ کی کاؤسٹ اتنی ہی ہو جائے اور یا جتنا آپ کا ٹائم ٹوٹل ڈوریشن چاہیے تھا اتنا ہی آپ منیجمنٹ پلان بنانے میں وہی ٹائم سپینڈ کر دیں so according to your project you actually do the effort and this is the true sense of this lecture and this session so uh, there comes the end note um, good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment so I hope we have uh, learned new things in this session and this session has been uh, quite informative for you people uh, I say goodbye and good luck for uh, your endeavors in your life and a thank you